Whether you're an optometrist, a medical doctor, accountant, lawyer, whatever profession you might be in, there is one common theme that I've seen amongst all high achievers from all sorts of backgrounds. And that is the desire to make an impact, to reach more people, to build a fulfilling career. So how do we do that? How do we reach people outside of our workplace? Or even within our workplace, how do we create more impactful and more fulfilling experiences? In this episode, I'm gonna share with you what I think are five very important things that we can all do, you could do right now, no matter what stage of your career you are at, to reach more people outside of the workplace, to potentially create new revenue streams, but most importantly, to build that professional, emotional, and spiritual fulfillment that we're all looking for through our passion, through our work. So, here we go. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the 2020 Podcast, bringing clarity to business, entrepreneurship, and life. I am your host, Dr. Harbir Sayan. Thank you again for taking the time to join me here to learn and to grow. As always, please do not forget to hit subscribe, hit like, leave a comment, whether you're listening on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, or watching on YouTube. Again, appreciate all your support and all your feedback. Thank you, guys. You can also find me on Instagram, if you didn't know that already, at harbirsayan.od. Feel free to shoot me a DM. I'm always looking for suggestions. If there's any topics that you'd like me to cover, anything that you'd like me to go a little more in depth on, I'd love to, love to hear those suggestions. And today might be one of those, because this conversation, I want to kind of go high level. I really want to share some thoughts and get the juices flowing and hopefully kind of brainstorm with you guys. And you might want me to, you may have some questions about kind of more step-by-step -step things in between. I'd be happy to share those privately or maybe we can do it on another podcast. But again, any suggestions you have, please feel free to reach out. So again, today, this conversation is about five things that I think we can all do right now, no matter what stage of our career we are at, to help us create more of an impact, to help us reach more people, and most importantly, to help us build fulfillment within our career. Because I think one of the issues we see, we've seen across the board, doesn't matter what profession you're in, is people get into a bit of a rut. They kind of get into the monotony and they get bored or they find that their profession maybe doesn't align with their, their values. And it's not really the profession, I think. I think it's the fact that we don't realize that we can do a lot with that profession or within the boundaries, so, so to speak, of that profession to make it more fulfilling for us. And I wanna share five things that I've done within optometry, but I think can be applied to any profession um, to help you make it more fulfilling for yourself. Okay, let's jump right in. Number one is to get creative, express your creative side. And if you can, which I think you can, blend that creativity in with your profession. And A, you might think, well, I'm not creative. I don't believe that because I think everybody has some amount of creativity in some realm or capacity. And two, you might be thinking, well, my creativity doesn't align with my profession. And I don't believe that that's true either. I found that I actually enjoy writing. And I thought, well, what does writing really have to do with optometry? But I started right after I graduated, I started blogging. I started writing blogs and I kind of just put my own sort of witty writing spin on, on the blogs. It, it, material that should have been boring and bland, like nearsightedness equals you can't see far away. You could turn that into all sorts of different things and put in all sorts of anecdotes and analogies. And I used to take rap lyrics, you know what I mean? Like just, just be creative, just be fun, enjoy it, let loose a little bit, whether you write, whether you like to draw or paint, whether you like to make videos, YouTube videos, whether you like to make podcasts, whatever it is, express that creativity, let it come through and try to see if you can blend it in with your career. And I think you'll be surprised at how an artist who is also a lawyer could put those things together or somebody who likes to knit uh, but is an optometrist could put those things together. This time in history of all times, we are able to bring out these little niches and, and you'll be surprised at how many people actually will be impressed and, and want to actually follow you or purchase your product or whatever it might be that has blended these two worlds together. So that's number one, be creative, express your creativity and let it come into your profession. Let it uh, blend into what you do at work and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how much fulfillment that brings you, but also potentially how much uh, of an audience it could bring you as well. Okay, number two is to get involved or to get out there. And this could mean multiple things. There are a few different points I wanna make under here. And one of the things I could have said in point one is social media. When we're talking about you know, being creative and creating content, 
course, you can think about social media, but I wanted to put it under this category here of getting involved or getting out there because social media is a great medium for us to reach more people, right? So creating yourself a professional profile online, using that to educate or to connect with um, other people in your profession or potential clients and, and patients, I think is a fantastic medium. But offline, there's a lot of things that we can do. And one of the things that's been the most helpful for me is to be involved in my association. So for example, here at the BC Doctors of Optometry, I will volunteer um, in a certain committee and previously I chaired a committee. And I found that many, many opportunities that have come to me, many valuable opportunities have come through my connections and network at the association and through my work and constant engagement at the association. And in addition, when you are involved with an association, you know that you're advocating for your profession, for the greater good of your profession, you're helping it move forward. And there's, there are a few things that are more fulfilling than that, knowing that the profession that you're involved in is growing because of the work that you are doing. The next thing that you could do is to get involved with industry. So to use optometry again as an example, you know, getting involved, speaking with your reps, your dry eye reps, your contact lens reps, looking for opportunities to engage with them, maybe perhaps speaking on their behalf if it's a product you really believe in, um, or looking for lecturing opportunities through those connections within the industry so you could educate. Educating is one of the things that I find most fulfilling, most satisfying. Knowing that you can impart knowledge and help somebody else grow and flourish is incredible. It's so fulfilling. So if you can find those opportunities, by connecting with people through your association or uh, connections through your industry. I think you'll find that is a really, really great way to reach more people, to grow your network, and to find more fulfillment in your profession. Okay, so number three is to push your boundaries and push your profession's boundaries. This is the good stuff, right guys? This is the juicy stuff here. So getting innovative, getting creative in the sense of trying to see how you can grow and expand your horizons. We all know the that saying, that kind of success quote that is like, uh, life starts at the edge of your comfort zone, right? It's always a little bit uncomfortable. And that goes for you as an individual, but as for the profession as a whole as well, you know, I would say for the individual, you know, doing things like making cold calls, emailing people. If you have an idea, jump on it right away. Don't let it sit. Don't dwell on it. Just do the first little thing you can do to, to push yourself uh, out of that comf comfort space to get a ball, get the ball rolling. And that might be you want to start a new company. Maybe you want to implement something new in your practice. Maybe uh, you want to just get involved with an existing group. You could create a group or a club. You know, maybe there's, uh, there are most likely a lot of people out there who are thinking the same thing as you. So if you have an idea of, you know, you want to create some kind of a think tank or some kind of a club for people who, who like a certain thing within your profession, get out there and do it. You'll never know until you do it. And I want to give you an example, a personal example of mine for what pushing my boundaries and potentially, you know, a little bit on pushing my profession's boundaries a little bit uh, felt like. So we all know, any, anybody in the eye care space knows, it was probably about a decade ago that really like the e-commerce uh, industry really started to take over in eye care, really started to disrupt eye care. You know, companies like here in BC, clearly uh, contacts and in general, uh, in the US, Warby Parker being a huge company that was uh, starting up around that same time. And the general the general feeling was in our, in our industry was fear and denial. People were like, forget that, we're not even gonna acknowledge them. We hate online, we hate e-commerce, they're doing it all the wrong way. And we just tried to ignore it. And I was one of those people too. But over the years we saw that little, those little companies started to turn into giant companies. And what started off as a little wave turned into a, a tsunami that was just basically taking over the industry. And I personally felt like, well, look, if, if it's happening, then why don't we try and do it our, ourselves? Why don't optometrists try and, try and do it the way that we would like to do it, see, see it do, done right? So I created my own company. You might know this story. I created Oxford and Kin, started about five years ago on that concept that I had to start this eyewear brand that would stay true to my, my ideals in opt as an optometrist, as somebody who likes to give back and wants other people to, to receive benefits from this company. And I started this company and, and to be honest, a lot of uh, my colleagues were skeptical at best. You know, I had people commenting on posts about like, well, I guess if you can't beat them, you're gonna join them as if like I'm giving up on my profession. Uh, but really what I was trying to do was to create something new that could help support our profession. And of course it would push our profession's boundaries in the sense of, 
let's all get on board with e-commerce guys we're going to need it and of course today now with covid we all know how important e-commerce is and most optometrists are trying to do it but at the time i knew nothing about digital marketing i knew nothing about e-commerce and barely anything about social media to be honest so i had to push my own boundaries to learn all of those aspects to try to create this brand and market and grow this brand so you may not want to try and do something to that degree but you might have some smaller goals that you want to do some smaller boundaries that you want to push and i highly encourage that you do it because when you get over those little humps when you get through those boundaries and you expand your horizons again that's super fulfilling and it's really encouraging for you to continue to grow and to do more and ultimately it may help you grow your profession even more all right we made it to number four but before we go into number four i want to quickly review one two and three number one was to be creative tap into your creative side if there are any little creative things that you like to do, little hobbies that you have, see if you can blend those in with your profession. Make that, that little connection there. I think you'll find that little niche that you have is actually really enjoyable for you. And you'll even find other people out there in the world who actually enjoy that as well. Number two is to get involved or to get out there. So get involved with your association, put yourself out there on social media, create a community and create opportunities for yourself uh, within your industry. And number three, what I thought was kind of that big juicy one, guys, was that push your boundaries and push your profession's boundaries. Think, think outside the box. Do things that may be a little bit different that maybe make you a little uncomfortable, perhaps even make people in your profession a little uncomfortable, but ultimately doing something that will, creating something that will help you and your profession grow. And number four is to specialize. Create some kind of specialty or niche within your practice. Now, those other three things were helping you reach outside the four walls, right? Outside of the four walls of your business, reach new people. But to really be fulfilled in your line of work, you also wanna make sure what you do within your four walls is fulfilling to you. And I found that when you start to specialize a little bit, when you start to add little specialties in the, into the way that you practice that differentiate you from other people in your field, it's really fulfilling for you when you are able to help patients in a different way that you haven't been able to before or maybe that patient has not been able to receive that kind of care anywhere else before because you are the one who's specializing in it. So, you know, taking optometry as an example, of course, whether you're specializing in dry eye or myopia control or contact lenses, whatever the case is, take some time to specialize a little bit into one of these realms. Maybe you can dabble a little bit, you know, Try a little bit of each one of these things and see which one really resonates with you. Maybe which one works well with your existing patient base so you can implement it right away. But I think that's, again, applicable across the board. You know, law, of course, has different types of practice, accounting and um, medicine. All these different professions have all sorts of uh, specialties within their fields uh, that I think it's really beneficial to, to narrow down a little bit. So you can feel like you're really helping and really making a difference. And of course, that forces you to learn, uh, you know, to continue to learn rather than just doing the general practice. When you are niche, becoming or, or working yourself into a bit of a niche or specialty, you have to educate yourself to become a specialist, to become an expert. You have to learn. And learning is always a really great way to keep your mind going, to stay fulfilled, to stay energized, and to, to feel like you're really in, ingrained in your profession, that you're not just doing the mundane nine to five monotonous stuff you're always trying to find something new that nice little pearl that can help you do more for your patients and your clients so number four is to specialize all right guys we made it to point number five but before we go into that let's quickly review the first four points number one was to get creative number two was to get involved or to get out there number three was to push your boundaries push your profession's boundaries and number four was to specialize number five which I think really is the most important one of these points when we're talking about making an impact and feeling fulfilled. Number five is the most important, and that is to give back. Giving back in as many different ways as you can. There's different ways to do it. I'll quickly share a couple ideas that I have, but giving back is gonna be the one thing that you do that is gonna make you feel the most fulfilled, the most satisfied, let you rest easy and sleep well at night. And there's one quote or one speech that I've listened to probably a thousand times over and it's at Arnold Schwarzenegger's I think it's a commencement speech years ago is six rules to success and the sixth one was to give back and he said no matter whether it's at a local or a provincial or a federal level giving back is what's going to give you that that feeling of success and enrichment and fulfillment now I've said the word success twice just in the last minute and I haven't said it at all before that during this podcast 
And I've been very intentional there because I think this is not about being successful. Everybody's got their own definition of success. This is about feeling fulfilled and enriched and satisfied with what you do on a daily basis. And giving back could mean volunteering. So for example, uh, with organizations like OneSite or here locally, we have an organization called the Eyeglasses Project. Um, it could mean educating free resources for education, whether you're creating content online or doing you know, webinars or other things like that. Education is a form of giving back, right? And in other ways, getting involved with your association, of course, is a way of giving back to your profession. Whatever way you can find it, however many possible ways you can find to give back, the more giving back you do uh, is going to make you feel more and more fulfilled on that spiritual, emotional, professional level. So if you have any ideas of how to give back, make sure you share it with others. Or if you're looking for ideas of how to give back, shoot me a DM. I'm on Instagram at harbirsayan.od. I hope you found these five points helpful. I hope they got the juices flowing for you. hope they gave you some ideas of how you could feel more fulfilled in your profession. Before you start to give up on your profession or start to feel like you're bored, start to think about ways that you can uh, find to feel more fulfilled within your profession. I hope this helped a little bit. And if it did, shoot me a message, take a screenshot, post it up on your Instagram, uh, on your stories. You know, tell me what you found, which one of these points you found to be most helpful to you. Um, and share some of your ideas with me about how you can enrich your career and feel more fulfilled. Thank you again for joining me, guys. I'll be back on another episode real soon. Take care. <laughs>